Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back in today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check it out. Team Up from Helvetic. This is for one to four players. Take you about 20 minutes to play, and it's for ages 7 to 99. And in Team Up, this is a game where you're going to have a small wooden pallet in front of you, and you're going to be putting blocks onto that wooden pallet, trying to get the blocks as high as you can. It's up to five rows. But there's going to be very specific things you can and cannot do with the wooden blocks blocks that you're placing on there. It's a very light, simple, cooperative, puzzly game, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Team Up. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule booklet. You're going to need the first five, six pages. They're double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, and plenty of examples. And you should have, should have you up and running in no time at all. So in team up what you're going to try and do is you're going to try to stack all of these blocks on this wooden pallet which yes actually is a really miniature wooden pallet which is kind of cool you're going to start with this one completely blank block right here aka no colors on it you're going to place it on there and then your goal is to try to draw cards and then place whatever tile is on those cards onto the pallet trying to complete rows now i want to show you the actual pictures of the rows to try and help explain how the scoring works in a second so the bottom part would be a row 10 points 15 points 20 points so every time you get a row you're going to get five points but now that i got all that down let's show you how the game plays so when you first set it up you're going to separate all the different colors and you're going to want to make it so that all the colors have the color side pointing up because that is the way that you're going to have to put them onto the board because there's a couple rules for how you're supposed to put these blocks on the board uh, so first all blocks have to be touching at all times well blocks do so you could not do this you could not do that you could not do anything unless these two blocks are touching next you have to make it so that blocks fit next to each other so you couldn't just be like you know i'm just gonna put this one all diagonal and crazy like that no they have to they have think of it like tetris they all have to be touching each other in a in a good way so like this has to be pressed firmly against this piece in order for the game to work also you cannot have things overhanging. So now that I have this, I could not do like this and just have, you know, this wide open space underneath here. That is not a legal move. Also, stuff could not be hanging over the side. But let's go ahead and show you how the game is played. So first thing you do, first person is going to draw a card. Bam, going to draw a card. This one says you can do any rectangle you would like. Uh, so that's what you mean. So that means you could do a rectangle that's shaped like this with the white on top. That means you could do a rectangle like this where it's on the bottom. And those are the two choices with the rectangles, I guess. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it right here. And this also brings me to one of the other major rules that I forgot to mention, which is that you cannot place two pieces right next to each other on top of each other that are identical. So I could not do this move right here and just have a rectangle laying down like this and a rectangle laying down like that. But I could, however, uh, do this move right here. And I will. I'll do that move right there. Then we flip over. We leave this card face up to let people know that we've done it. Next, we're going to flip over the next card. The next card is a square. So once again, the next person would get to go, and they could put a square face up like this, or down like this, assuming the color's like that, or any other way that is possible. So we'll put the square right here, fill in that nice little gap right there, and flip over the next card. This is any red card I would like to use. And you know what? I want to use, bam, this red card right here, fill in the bottom part of that row. Feels good. Next card, any square, so we'll go with a blue square, because that's one of the big things about this game, is trying to make it so that you're evenly using your colors, because how the scoring is going to work, because I showed you, you'll score five points for each row you're able to successfully complete, but you're also going to lose points for the cards that you're not able to utilize. So let's say that I was completely out of blue cards, and I chose to pick another card because how the game works is you're going to stop when you want to stop when you're like all right i don't think i can play whatever this next mystery card is in which case at that point you stop but if you were to flip over a blue card and you did not have a blue card then that blue card would go face down like this and this is going to lose you points at the end of the game so at the end of the game you're going to lose one point for each box that is not stacked on the pallet and one point for each card that is face down so in this particular instance it's a white one though so i could very easily play 
place it, you know, right there. And then let's see what we got. Let's just finish this row right here. We can either use a small one of these or a long one of these. And that's kind of perfect. Actually, no, it's not kind of perfect, but we'll put it right there anyway. And what do we got next? What do we got next? Square, not really what I was hoping to get, but hey, actually, you know what? We'll put a square right here, and I should probably stop using so many blues. We got ourselves a rectangle, which means we can go splat out right there. That's looking good. That's looking real nice, real nice over there. We got ourselves a square, and let's use a red square and place it right there. We really need something to put right there so we can finish that row. Come on, I want to finish the row. Any rectangle we want. I don't feel like we've used white in a while, so we'll put white right there. Actually, we have. We already used it, but whatever. Any blue we want, and now we can do this, and we have successfully completed that part, that row. So we would have five points right now. Anywho, you're going to continue to go until you either want to stop doing it, until you want to stop doing the cards, or until you've beaten the game, of course, because there is a possible way. The high score is 25 points. But at the end of the game, you're going to count up how many rows you've built, minus how many tiles, or how many pieces of wood you have left, and minus how many cards you have face up like this, and that's how many points you're going to get. Uh, there's no real winners, it's just you try to beat your score from game to game to game. But that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Team Up. Alrighty then, team up from Helvetic. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, uh, one to four players, so it is somewhat of a restricted player count. You could play with more players, but it's just going to water down the experience because, being brutally honest, this is a solo game at its core. This is this is just a game where you're stacking blocks on top of there. I mean, yes, you could talk about what some good moves are, some optimal moves, but really, this is a solo game at its core, and you need to know that. Another thing that is a downside with this is that it's one of those games where you're not going to win. You're pretty much never going to win. You're not going to get 25. Let's be brutally honest here. It's not going to happen, in, especially if you're shuffling up the cards. Because shuffling up the cards adds a big element of randomness to the game. And that element of randomness is going to make it so you're pretty much never going to be able to get to 25 points in the game. Because it even says, if you really want to try to get to 25 points, put all the cards in the correct order, and then there is an optimal way to get to the 25 points. So if you're not going to get to the 25 points, and this is one of those games where it's just, hey, try and beat your high score. And I don't like games like that. I don't like solo games like that. And I especially don't like competitive games like that or cooperative games like that. And I don't think I've played a co-op game that was, hey, just try and get your high score. Uh, you know what? Actually, I have. There's been a couple of them. But I like it when it really goes in depth. Like, this means that you did this. This means that you did that. And this one's just like, hey, 10 to 15, great job. 15 to 20. Excellent, 20 to 25, master, something like that. I don't like when games do that. Uh, another con that I have with this game is that it's very puzzly, and if you do not like puzzly style games, this one will not be for you. There's also quite a few restrictions that you have to remember when you're uh, first learning the game. It would have been nice if there was a player aid card. Not a big deal, or maybe even just on the back of the tuck box would have been nice. But it's not a big deal, just a minor nitpick. Abstract strategy game. This is definitely abstract. There's no real theme. You are just putting blocks onto a wooden pallet and trying to stack them up in the perfect way. I mean, they could have made it so it's about like a guy working in a factory or something. They could have tried to slam a theme on there. I, I guess I appreciate the fact they didn't because it clearly there's no theme. That will be a turn off to some people. Um, you know, the biggest comment out of this game is that this game is just not for me. And that makes it somewhat hard to review. When I first started playing this game, I was just not on board with this game, and I, I was trying to, you know, I try to come into every game with an open mind, and I saw other people around me really enjoying the game and wanting to play it again and again, and I was just, it just was not me, and it kind of reminds me of Dixit in that aspect, where I see other people, they're there, they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, and I was not, uh, so... For me personally, Team Up is one that I didn't really enjoy, and I can't put my finger on exactly why. All the reasons that I said, normally in the cons, I give you hypothetical cons a lot of the time, like some people might not like this, some people might not like that, some people might not like this thing. And all the cons that I gave you in this game are my actual cons. So I don't even have hypothetical cons. I gave you my cons. Moving on to the pros, I still think Team Up is good now i'm leaning more towards the okay 
category. Like I'm more like a six to a six and a half, but I'm going to give this a seven. The big reason I'm going to give it a seven is because I think it's just me and my brain because I played this with probably 10 other people grand total. Uh, most of them were kids, but I had two of them that were adults, and they really enjoyed the game. Everybody was like, oh yeah, it's a really neat concept for a game. I love the components. I love the colors. I love the fact that you never know what cards you're going to draw. It's like a press your luck thing at the end where, you know, should I keep going? If I keep going, you know, we're going to get an extra point to our score because we'll put the block on there. But if I don't keep going, we're going to lose the point. And people really like that aspect. And I was... Eh? Okay, I mean, I didn't think it was a terrible game. I just, it just is not a game for me. So, well, Team Up has great components. I like the fact it comes with a bag. So if you want to put it into a bag, you can take it on the go. Not that I would ever do that because, you know, I'd much rather take a box because, you know, I'm weird. Not that I'm keeping the game, but still, nonetheless, um, the rules are well done. The components, I, uh, the components look great. It has a visual appeal. It's going to draw people to the table because people are going to see you stacking blocks on a wooden pallet in a really intricate way. And they're going to be like, what is that game? And they're going to be able to pretty much pick up the rules as you're playing the game, as long as you're explaining them as you're doing them. And they can join in with you on the next game. It does bring up some lively discussion about where and which pieces are potentially the right pieces to play at certain times, which is good, especially in a cooperative game. One more comment I have of this game is that it can lead itself to alpha games. And that's another thing that happened uh, quite frequently with this game, where someone was like, "Oh no, no, no! Don't, don't play that piece. We need it. We need a square that's flat. We need a flat square. Oh no, 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 no! no. Don't, don't use blue. We are so close to being out of blue. Go play the white because we have like three extra whites. A lot of that sort of thing going on, which I don't really like in games that much. But it's not for me, you know. I, I do whatever the hell I want anyway. Uh, but, but team up." from Helvetic. I'm going to give it a 7, which means that it's a good game because everybody else that I've played it with liked it. But for me personally, I just thought it was okay. So, very difficult game to review. You know what? Forget that. 6.8. 6.8. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below and in the comments below. Let me know. Team up. Oh, that's one last comment I have of the game. This game is incredibly repetitive. Every single game felt the exact same way, and it always felt like it was going to feel that way. Unless you somehow manage to pull off like a 20-plus score, every game of this is going to feel very, very samey. And I imagine once you start pulling off 20-plus scores, every game of it at that score is going to feel like the same thing over and over again as well. So incredibly repetitive. Um, not enough meat on the bones. Man, there's just so many other cons that I didn't forget to mention. Yeah, so there you go. Team up. How about it? If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what was the last game that you played that everybody else liked, and you're like, what? I don't get it. What What am I not getting here? And it just frustrated you. For me personally, as I mentioned, Dixit. Dixit is that game for me. I have grown to like Dixit somewhat, but it still frustrates me just how differently my brain works from everybody else. But there you go. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.